Okay, welcome. Uh, we are in the uh, Nuho Tani Hotel in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, it is June 21st, 2016. I'm Doug Fairbairn and uh, I'm talking with uh, Toshimasa Kihara. Yes? Yes. And uh, we're very <coughs> glad to have you here. Welcome. Thank and you as for we were talking before, we are looking forward to capturing the stories of uh, people who have uh, made important contributions to the semiconductor and computing world that we live in. And so we're delighted to have you uh, with us. Um, before we get into the details of your career and some of the things you've done, we always like to start with um, understanding your background and how you grew up and what your family life was like, and especially understanding what influences and what things might have steered you in the direction of technology. So if you could start and just tell us a little bit about when and where you were born and uh, a little bit about your family, uh, what your father and mother were engaged in, if you have brothers and sisters, if they followed a similar path. So why don't you just start with that and okay. tell us a little bit about your early family life. Okay. The <clears throat> I was born in the 1946 mm -hmm. uh, in the Yamaguchi Prefecture, which is located uh, at the very uh, southwest end of the Honshu Island. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, 500 miles uh, away from Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And uh, the <coughs> my father was uh, an ordinary employee of the electric company. Of the what? Electric company. Electric company, yeah. uh-huh. And, uh, well, the, my mother was a, a school teacher before I was born. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, I have three brothers all boys mm -hmm. and the, I am the eldest and uh, the uh, one of my brother became the uh, government official of the uh, internal internal affairs internal uh, affairs yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, government officials anyway mm -hmm. And uh, the, the other brother became the engineer, mm -hmm. engineer in the field of the numerical controls and mm -hmm. robotics. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, the government official, he was technical, I'm the official, mm -hmm. so all of th three of us has chosen kind of the scientific mm -hmm. science type. <coughs> <coughs> and. Uh, the, my father uh, didn't talk much directly to me unless uh, the, I, did, uh, I did something wrong. When I did uh, something wrong, he strongly <laughs> instructed not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you had a lot of negative feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Although, you know, <clears throat> He didn't talk much, and uh, well, it was very typical the father in the family mm -hmm. in Japan in those days. Mm -hmm. The had he gone to university? Uh, I don't think so. There are no university system at that time. Ah, yeah, there were, but no. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, my. Uncle, my aunt, mm -hmm. they lived nearby of my, you know, home, mm -hmm. and uh, the two of them were the young uh, school teachers. Mm -hmm. So uh, I I was sort of surrounded by the school teachers, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I was the first uh, the child in the family, so 
、雪見町にバスが8分。<笑><笑>
scientist is the hero. <laughs> yeah, the hero. <laughs> hero, hero, of, hero of the country, yeah. Japan. So yeah. and those made me, uh, those inspire me a lot and steer me to the direction of the science mm -hmm. or technology. So when I go to the university, mm -hmm. the University of Tokyo, uh, there were uh, six uh, uh, to choose. Mm -hmm. One is uh, three in the science and mm -hmm. three in the, in the, uh, uh, the four politician or economist kind of things. But <coughs> I have joined this scientific science work side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, but I was not ready to uh, uh, the pin down the, my major <laughs> <laughs> when I entered the university. Uh, the good thing was that uh, the University of Tokyo uh, didn't require to to pin down the, your measure mm -hmm. until the second year, the end of the mm -hmm. second year. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons you know, I, I, I chosen the University of Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And also the University of Tokyo, University of Tokyo was considered to be the number one mm -hmm. down, uh, in terms of the, uh, in its quality. Mm -hmm. And another, uh, reason is that uh, uh, that university located in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. uh, Tokyo uh, was very attractive, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the student life in Tokyo mm -hmm. was very much attractive for, <laughs> the, for the school boy. <laughs> uh, I was born in and raised in the small, you know, local town. So, uh, so you were. <laughs> Excited to go to the big city, huh? Tokyo <laughs> <Yes. laughs> That must be, you know, yes. you know, worthwhile to, to, to live there. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, I've chosen the University of Tokyo. So at the at University of Tokyo or others, do they have dormitories, on-site housing for students like we do in the United States? Is it uh, uh, the yes, uh, living there situation? Yes. They had uh, dormitories. Mm -hmm. uh, when I, I nowadays now I think that uh, they take away the those dormitory. Mm. They don't have now, but uh, yes, they had when I entered there. Mm -hmm. And half of the students live there, and the other half not there. Mm -hmm. I didn't de live there, <coughs> but uh, the. I stayed there <laughs> with uh, the, my friend lived mm -hmm. there, and uh, the I lived uh, outside of the dormitory. But uh, so you had to commute to uh, to school. Uh, yeah, but very very near. I mean, the ten minutes walk or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. So very close. Yeah. And but you uh, hung around school with your friends. Yeah, very much, <laughs> and they even stayed there. They the stayed dormitory. in their rooms. Yeah. <laughs> Quite often, <laughs> it was very fun. Uh, so you, uh, memory, so you were there, and and uh, you finally decided to study applied physics. Yes, uh, applied physics course uh, uh, for the second half of the uh, college time, mm -hmm. and uh, the for the graduate school as well. Mm -hmm. The same applied physics. When, when did you enter the university? What year did you enter? Uh, it was 65 and graduated uh, 69 mm -hmm. and uh, finished the uh, master's course 71. Mm -hmm. so. And then you immediately went to uh, work at Hitachi? Yes. And how did you choose Hitachi? Why? Mm, well, uh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the uh, didn't have the good consideration. Uh, one that uh, the Hitachi was considered to be the most technology-oriented uh, company, mm. and uh, the there were 
uh, former classmates already working or senior classmates. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them working already there. And uh, the I before uh, went to the Hitachi, I you know communicated to those you know my classmates there, and they said that. Uh, yeah, Hitachi is a good place, <laughs> and uh, the, they said that Hitachi values the technology and the engineers mm -hmm. the most. Mm, but company have to. <laughs> I realized that the company have to be, you know, profitable. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. <laughs> but at that time, you know, the, it's a good, you know, message, you know. Mm -hmm the company value you and the technology mm -hmm. the most. So, so that's, that's the reason why. Good. So what to, did you know you wanted to get into semiconductors? Is that, had you done work in that in your master's program or? I, you... I did uh, choose the semiconductor uh, area mm -hmm. uh, for my thesis. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, so that's one of the reasons why I've chosen the semiconductor area. But uh, the professors uh, said that uh, silicon uh, was uh, no more interesting, you know, attractive enough from the uh, material science point of view. It's you say it was not attractive? Not attractive. Uh -huh. It's already well. You know, investigated. Well understood and well right, understood. characterized. And characterized. Uh -huh. And uh, they recommend me to uh, choose the compound uh, semi semiconducting materials mm -hmm. like uh, cadmium telluride mm -hmm. or cadmium sulfur, arsenic, or those kind of the mm -hmm. uh, compound semiconductors. And uh, the <coughs> uh, the uh, research at, at the uh, uh, graduate school or the, at the you know, the, the university mm -hmm. uh, the guided me to do the experiments or to measurement mm -hmm. uh, of those materials and uh, do the computer simulations and to uh, analyze the electron band structure mm -hmm. or do some uh, like interactions between electrons and the phonons. So I did all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, the so that's sort of the semi semiconductor area. But that was your for, background when you background. went to Hitachi. <laughs> and uh, the, what I saw is that, uh, at that at that time when I was uh, doing these uh, research work at, mm -hmm. uh, at the college or graduate school, I am not necessarily very much good at uh, these uh, uh, love work. Mm -hmm. uh, the, it wasn't necessary to grow the single crystal to begin with mm -hmm. and make the samples for the measurement and to purify these those, you know, materials. Uh, and the, I thought that uh, this might not be the one which, you know, I have to, cho <laughs> <laughs> I have to choose. So, yeah, at the time when I entered the, you know, company mm -hmm. in Hitachi, the, many of them of our plants uh, uh, went to the central laboratories, mm -hmm. laboratories of Hitachi. And I was, uh, you know, the advised to go there. That's natural, you know, mm -hmm. us. But I thought that uh, uh, lab work might not be the, you know, area where Mm -hmm. I should go, and I dared to choose the business group mm -hmm. 
without knowing what is the IC, so <laughs> what is the computer, so whatever. Mm -hmm. But yet I have chosen the semiconductor business group of the Hitachi. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, my, the, my classmates also working there. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I have a good, you know, reason why I've chosen the semiconductor area. Mm -hmm. And I have personal reason to choose the business side instead of the, mm -hmm. you know, laboratories. So did you look at other companies? What were the other, like NEC or um, mm, Fujitsu or? Uh, actually, the, actually, no, you know, uh, you, you may remember that uh, that's the time of the student movement. Yes. So we are not very much serious about the, you know, working or something. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, uh, discussing or just, uh, you know, uh, the, in some case, you know, uh, uh, share the time with my with our friends or mm -hmm. with the, uh, the faculty members. Mm -hmm. And we don't have, I didn't have a special interest in choosing, uh, but uh, I found that it's time to, to finalize my choice. Mm -hmm. the late, uh, it was late, uh, it's uh, late autumn of the graduation. Graduation is the March, mm -hmm. so it's almost the time you have to fix your <laughs> next time, so <laughs> next time, and uh, the, uh, uh, then the my friend there say, oh, why don't you come to <laughs> study? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's that was easy. <laughs> so, what was the state of semiconductors within Hitachi? Was it it was a, still a small part of the business at that time? Is that right? I, it's relatively small, but just mm, uh, mm, yeah, compared to the you know whole Hitachi, uh, Hitachi business, mm -hmm. other business unit, that the semiconductor, semiconductor was very small. The actually, when I took uh, some interview before mm -hmm. uh, uh, hired by the Hitachi, I was asked, why you don't choose uh, computer mm -hmm. or uh, like uh, the uh, power uh, the the nu uh, nuclear mm -hmm. power uh, generation. Mm -hmm. There are two of those are the major focus of the company. <laughs> right. But uh, uh, but mainly because that uh, I don't have any you know. The classmates over there. So no. <laughs> yeah, All yeah, your friends are over here. I have many friends here. <laughs> and I have chosen the semiconductor. <laughs> so the other, I think that it was relatively small uh, in terms of the size of the business. So young. Just so what was the what was your first uh, job or activity within Hitachi? What did you start with? Uh, the I was engaged in the de designs mm -hmm. uh, in general. I did design the custom LSI for the calculators. Mm -hmm. I did design of the shift register chip and uh, the- You're doing uh, circuit design? Circuit design and the layout design. Oh, you did everything, <laughs> huh? <laughs> for that shift register. Uh -huh. For the calculator case, uh, mainly, you know, layout design. Mm -hmm. And uh, the EPRO memories. Mm -hmm. And also, I did uh, the design of the 4-bit uh, micro microcomputer chip. For this case, uh, logic as well. So you did the logic design for uh, yeah, for those. Mm -hmm. So I did quite a wide range of the uh, mm -hmm. product lines, memory, <laughs> custom chip, <laughs> uh, uh, or, and also technology-wise. Uh, the I did the. Uh, yield improvement or failure analysis mm -hmm. uh, to improve the yield. Uh, or, or, so I did quite a wide range of the technologies and mm -hmm. the product lines as well. 
it was very good, you know, yeah. afterwards. The, it was possible at that time, since, you know, each product or each project mm -hmm. itself, size is really small. Right. So, uh, the, of course, I did uh, yeah, some, you know, uh, guidance from my boss, but I could have that kind of hands-on right. you know, right. experiences. It was very helpful. Yeah, one person could do everything yeah, on some yeah, of the that smaller time. chips. Yeah. So when you're doing microcomputer design, this is in the very early days. I mean, Intel did, did yeah, just yeah. did the 4-bit. Yeah, and, I did uh, uh, the four -bit design of the 4-bit uh, microcomputer, which is compatible with the Intel. So, okay, so you used, that was your reference design, so yeah. that you knew what... Uh, and uh, at that time, there were no knowledge in the semiconductor group, group of Hitachi mm -hmm. about the knowledge about the computer, I mean, the uh, computer mm -hmm. in general. So <clears throat> I visited uh, the uh, laboratories, which is corporate mm -hmm. laboratories, laboratory independent of the uh, semiconductor business unit, mm -hmm. and uh, they did the research on the uh, Hitachi had the mainframe biz uh, mm -hmm. business units. Mm -hmm. So there are many researchers there. Mm -hmm. And so I got, uh, you know, uh, the advice or lessons from those guys, and I learned. What, 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 what year did you work on the 4-bit microcomputer? Uh, I, uh, 70, 70, I'm not sure, 74 mm -hmm. or 73 or that time mm -hmm. frame. So it's still a very new technology and a very it was new very idea. Very new at that time. Many people didn't understand at that time what it would be good for or what uh -huh. the applications were. Uh, yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, I, uh, what I developed and uh, the 4 bit chip, which is compatible with the Intel, mm -hmm. the, there were no good business there. <laughs> Actually, there are no customers there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but interesting is that uh, the computer, I mean, the 4-bit, it was 4-bit, but it's parallel processing. Mm -hmm. But uh, the uh, calculator chip is serial. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are you know, clear differences in terms mm -hmm. of the hardware, uh, hardware architectures. Mm -hmm. so Interesting. Yeah. So, did Hitachi start working on that, or they wanted you to do that because they said, you know, Intel was doing it and they wanted to go? I mean, with that clear application, I was just wondering what was the driving force? Because um, mm. Intel actually did it, they didn't know what they were doing either. They were just going to make a calculator, use it as a <laughs> programmable calculator, right? Uh, yes, did true. you have any, uh, do you know what the... the actually, you know, I, I was told to do that you were, by, yeah. uh, by my boss. Yeah. So, uh, but company at that time was, was always very, you know, uh, the paying the attention to mm -hmm. the, you know, to the... Uh, uh, the uh, all new technologies in general, mm -hmm. and uh, the yeah that microcomputer was you know one of the hot topic mm -hmm. in the industry, so mm -hmm. that might be why. Uh, what about support software and that sort of thing? Did you was the goal just to use what Intel did, uh, or did you de start developing compilers and other things to go? Uh, uh, the, in the case of the 4-bit, the that was not required that uh, the just the assembler mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I don't know whether the, there are any compiler or debugging tools in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't. I mean, Hitachi was not working on those things. Um, they did some work, I, I guess, but somewhere, but. Uh, at least it's it was not the you know substantial activity there. Right. Uh, we did that a lot for the eight bit, mm -hmm. yes, uh, or our own disk architectures. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 
the, those are much more burden than the chip design itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, the support or ecosystem was you know, the big focus, but uh, for that, I uh, forget. So how did things work out with your first chip? Did it work the first time or uh, what was your I experience doing this uh, 4-bit computer? <laughs> the, what I remember is that at that time, there are no simulator, comp uh, in the, uh, software simulator there, for logic simulator. So yeah. what I did is, uh, have you heard of the you know, jargon mock-up? Uh, pick up the, you know, uh, the logic, I mean, uh, TTLs. Yes. And com the using the all those TTL, you know, build up the huge uh, factory. Oh, you build a breadboard. Breadboard, yeah. <laughs> Mocked up like breadboard. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, yeah, yes, you know, finally I did it that it, it's working. <laughs> 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 then the, you know, the engineers came from the various. Uh, uh, you know, location where the, they are uh, for they are doing the calculator chip design or mm -hmm. memory chip design. They didn't know anything about the computer. So right. yeah, this is the computer. <laughs> <laughs> How did you even test it? I mean, you needed. I to... did some, you know, simple uh -huh. uh, program. Uh, I I made it and uh, the uh, made the whole, made it as a, a I mean. Uh, the made some computer. Mm -hmm. uh, the what I did is the CPU portion only, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, I did some uh, the I did some test programs and synchron and uh, and uh, the uh, the use that program to test whether the CPU is working working mm -hmm. or not. And yeah, just lamp uh, and periodic lamp lighting or something mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. simple one. Had you ever written software before? Or had you ever written a program? Mm, I, I don't have any you know experience. Uh, the it was before I studied the you know, uh, computer, computer science, science right. that the samples. So, but yeah, but I did see, uh, the computer simulation for the material science. So mm, I did okay. some, you know, program, programming, right. but uh, the, that was not uh, the so assembler kind of things, mm -hmm. yeah, hybrid languages. So did you, did you see what the potential was of this microcontroller you were designing? Did, did you get excited about that, or was it just one of the jobs that, came, that you were assigned? Mm, <clears throat> the... Uh, I thought this is the one which I have to do. Mm -hmm. uh, the actually, I remember that uh, the I wrote uh, some kind of research paper report. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I have that the copy, but uh, I think that uh, the my boss may have said that you you do this or something, but mm -hmm. that. The, the the report is about the uh, evaluation of the computer architectures mm -hmm. and comparisons. Mm -hmm. The ch I have chosen the Intel, eight bit, mm -hmm. and the Motorola eight bit, and also is this the eighty eighty and the sixty eight hundred? Eighty eighty and sixty eight hundred. Okay. And uh, the <coughs> there were uh, research activity. Mm -hmm. uh, in place at that time for our own 8-bit uh, microcomputer. Yes. Uh, the, and what I did is uh, to evaluate each of them in mm -hmm. terms of its performance or in terms of the functionality mm -hmm. and uh, future expandability. You know, mm -hmm. it was necessary mm -hmm. to expand uh, the uh, instruction set or register structure or whatever mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. So I did all those, you know, analysis and uh, the I did ev uh, evaluated uh, three of them and I concluded that ours is the best. <laughs> 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 and that, that report was the for in uh, for for the company, mm -hmm. not not 
issued outside of the company, but dis distributed in the company. And then... The report was distributed within the yeah. company, huh? And then the <clears throat> memo came down from the top management of the semiconductor group at that time, say, which says that uh, this report is wrong. Wrong. <laughs> 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 this report is wrong because that, uh, it underestimates the importance of the software compatibility. Mm -hmm. That's the most essential for the uh, computer type you know, business. You say you underestimated the importance? I underestimated. Underestimated the importance. So you said yours was best on a technical merit, but didn't consider enough the software compatibility? Yes. <laughs> yes. Had uh, that, had your product, the Hitachi product, been designed like in, the, in one of the research groups? In this group. And it has something to do with the you know, uh, future application in the automotive engine. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hitachi had the automotive uh, electronics uh, division, mm -hmm. I mean the business group. Mm -hmm. So probably there was some plan in place, and the research group were doing the, some, you know, planning of the product. Mm -hmm. uh, again, by the way, that's microprogram control. Mm. <laughs> and uh, the uh, yeah, architecture was that good. Mm -hmm. but so what, when did you write this report? What year was it? Uh, you the, uh, the 74 or something, 74 mm -hmm. or 5. Okay. Yeah, I do have the report. Oh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> Since, you know, that this is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you feel? Did you agree with their... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, uh, yeah. Did you... Yeah, but I, I understood how important it is mm -hmm. to be compatible. Yeah, mm -hmm. software is so important mm -hmm. for the, you know, computer business. Mm -hmm. uh, the, that, it was a case in the mainframe area mm -hmm. or in the mini computer area, the software, I mean, the architecture became standardized mm -hmm. in the industry. And uh, I was not very much familiar, familiar with those, you know, trend, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if I sit down and think about that, it's very much understandable. Software mm -hmm. must be the first mm -hmm. for this kind of the product. So what was the result of that? Um, the, did, you, did they change plans or what directions or how did it influence Myself. you? Or uh, the when that report came down, what was the impact? After that, mm -hmm. well, after that uh, I was told uh, to go to Motorola. I was, the, the management decided to license the technology from mm -hmm. Motorola and I was uh, delegated to Motorola, Motorola Austin, mm -hmm. uh, for a week or a few weeks mm -hmm. to get uh, technology or product transferred. Mm -hmm. I was just alone there, so it was good, by, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, they told you to go to Motorola, and how was that received? Was Motorola willing to do a license, and what specifically were that you was, looking for? That was, you know, licensing uh, the agreement were in pl I mean, made mm -hmm. before, of course, before I go there. Oh, okay. And uh, the there were agreement that the technology to be transferred from Motorola. So was that to get the exact chip, or to just uh, make a software compatible? Product, the what was product the itself, the processors, I mean the CPUs. You're going to transfer they, it directly. They, they transfer to us. Okay, all and the design material the, and masks yeah, everything. and everything. Yeah, and we do develop the peripherals. Okay, like uh, peripheral controllers, mm -hmm. like a floppy disk controllers or DMAs. So it was the agreement that they would give you the processor, and then you would develop peripheral chips that would go yes. back to them. And also some, you know. The CMOS technologies transferred oh. as well. Okay. I think. Yeah. It's a quite big, you know, mm -hmm. the arrangement there in place. And 
my mission is to get uh, the CPU transferred from them. So your go, your mission was to go get it and bring it. Uh, and were they cooperative? Did did you? They were very much co co mm -hmm. co cooperative. Uh -huh. uh, the, they were typical Texas guys. <laughs> So I had a good time with them. They How long did you spend in Austin? Uh, I, a few weeks. Mm -hmm. I don't uh, have the exact uh, you know uh, number, but mm -hmm. uh, the I stayed in a small hotel mm -hmm. outside of the uh, facility, mm -hmm. and uh, the since I couldn't drive, so the they took me every day <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> And uh, bring me to the for for my dinner. There. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you transfer the technology back. Was Hitachi able to get the product into production quickly? Is how uh, it, we we uh, it was very quick mm -hmm. for us to uh, make it and uh, the do business with. But uh, the from the uh, engineer's point of view, or even from the manager's point of view, the doing the business with the flag compatible machine, mm -hmm. no differentiation was no fun. Mm -hmm. So we tried to make the processor differentiated from the Motorola, mm -hmm. and we did uh, the CMOS design mm -hmm. on those, and uh, the also. Uh, the uh, EPROM integration mm -hmm. into the microcomputer chip, which is today's hot, today's main topic. But uh, the we try to differentiate EPROM, uh, EPROM, EPROM, replace the MASCROM mm -hmm. in the chip by the EPROM. Mm -hmm. So did that then have to be transferred back to Motorola, or was that your own? Uh, the uh, that was the. It was not transferred mm -hmm. as a reality, but uh, the I understand that uh, Hitachi was ready to do that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Motorola so, may not have had the EEPROM process. To... Uh, uh, if they want to do that, they could do that. I think, yeah. but. Uh, there are sort of the NIH mind, mm -hmm. not invented here. Yes. Especially in the te uh, in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> especially in Texas. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I don't know. But <laughs> I can fair, understand, I, I can understand very much. Yeah. <laughs> we had about the same feeling, you know. We, uh, the when I focus our own <laughs> yes. of, that we got from someone else. Right. So, kind of, yeah. So, uh, so you st did you then begin development of your own 8-bit processor in addition uh, to the second we, source? In the first of all, we you know focused on uh, the, the on developing the fully software compatible, but mm -hmm. the CMOS and EEPROM integrated, mm -hmm. and it was very well accepted by the customer. Mm -hmm. By the way. And I believe that uh, we did contribute to expand the Motorola architecture, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, there were some, you know, conflict in the market mm -hmm. uh, among two companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> some uh, negotiation down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, we decided to go to the, you know, new architecture, different from the Motorola. Mm -hmm. It was t very tough for us to go to the different architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we thought is uh, uh, trying to compete against the Motorola architecture uh, by in the in the uh, the assembler language mm -hmm. uh, level, instead uh, we uh, thought that uh, the the you know 
market have to go to the C compiler. Mm -hmm. So we <coughs> try to make the you know good hardware architecture which fit to the C, C compiler mm -hmm. most. And uh, uh, we released those products. We called it the H H8 series, by the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, the it was a time that uh, the market is going uh, from the assembler mm -hmm. to C compiler, I mean mm -hmm. C languages. So the timing was very good, mm -hmm. and we strongly promoted that. Well, we guided <coughs> our customer base. Let's go to the C compiler, mm -hmm. which uh, should be the way how you can, you know, <coughs> improve the your burden. I mean, reduce your burden yeah. uh, by using the high level languages, and our compiler is, you know, efficient. So mm -hmm. don't worry about. It. And uh, the speed, I mean, the uh, performance is good enough uh, to cover, to, com to compensate uh, the uh, delayed by applying the right. higher range. So before you got involved in all of that, though, you, you took a year and went to Stanford, is that right? Uh, uh, that's fine, but uh, the, uh, <coughs> yes, uh, the, all those things like us, uh, Development of the CMOS version mm -hmm. was after I came back from the motor. Okay, yeah. uh, for, after you came back from Stanford. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, from uh, the. Uh, so you had uh, transferred software. the technology for the original processor, and then sometime after that, you went to Stanford and got a master's degree in mm -hmm. computer science. Yes. And uh, what is there some important? Is there some specific? things that you learned in that year that you could later apply, or was it just sort of general basic understanding of better understanding of computer science that made you able to um, be a better contributor in the, in the microcomputer space? Was there any, did, did it change your mind or, or make you take a different direction? Yeah, 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 yeah I know that. The, I cannot think about the specific things, but mm -hmm. the it was very nice for me to have, to have the you know understanding about the computer mm -hmm. uh, in a very systematic manner. Mm -hmm. you know. I did that piece by piece, yes. but uh, it was not uh, very much well right. organized. You don't have the total perspective. Yeah. So you studied computer architecture as well as software development and. I didn't do many software in the uh, uh, study at the comp uh, Stanford. More hardware. More hardware. Yeah. Okay. At that time. But uh, yeah, I do some yes software. So. So you came back. You went to Stanford in seventy eight. Seventy seven. Seventy seven. Seventy seven to seventy eight. Uh huh. So. And just after that, we d we. As a company, did uh, the development of the CMOS mm -hmm. version of the, the the yeah I think yeah yes yeah mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, EEPROM I mean non-volatile memory programmable memory integration is after the CMOS version which was. Uh, like a middle of the oh. 80s, so a few years later, uh, after we introduced CMOS version. So How much later? A few years later. A few years later. Yeah. Uh huh. 80 something. Okay. I have to check. Um, so when you came back to Stanford, what was the focus of your own personal activity? What projects were you engaged in at that point? And had the decision been made when you came back to develop your own architecture, or was that something that you did uh, when you came the back? We do microcomputer chip business. <laughs> so what I focus on is from that time, you know, the microcomputer mm -hmm. chip business, develop, uh, product development, 
and after that, uh, the business mm -hmm. by those products. But when you came back from Stanford, had Hitachi already decided to develop their own architecture, or was that something that you helped guide uh, when you got back? Uh, the, when I came back from Stanford, the Hitachi's, uh, the strategy is to stay fully software compatible. Okay. Meaning that uh, not the priority, pri right. uh, proprietary architecture. Right. Yeah. So it was some time after that. Do you remember mm -hmm. when uh, that decision? Did you participate or did you drive that decision to? I was particip I participated uh -huh. a lot. The there were some uh, the some the issues mm -hmm. raised by the Motorola. Uh, if we continue uh, developing and doing the software compatible, but uh, the CMOS or uh, field of program device uh, mm -hmm. technologies integrated, that's you know what. That's not what the, they intended mm -hmm. at the beginning at, when they do arrangement. Right. So. We are needed to do something mm -hmm. there to uh, resolve this situation. Mm -hmm. That's one reason. And the other is, you know, what we thought that, uh, the, as I said, the people are moving to the CMOS, I mean, the high level languages and the assembler. Right. So we thought that it's time to let's do that way. Right. And uh, yeah, let me see, what's that? Let's see. Uh, uh, I have to check. H8. Mm, regional architecture. So it's uh, 88. 88. So I think that uh, the, <coughs> uh, the Controversial discussion started on the middle of the 80s. Mm -hmm. So five, five years or more after we introduced uh, the technology from Motorola, mm -hmm. uh, the, we felt that we have to do something to, you know. You had to differentiate your. Differentiate. Right. And not just, uh, you know. Motorola compatible only, but mm -hmm. uh, do something. And uh, we introduced our product in 88. So what was the, in the first processor of your own architecture, what was the most important characteristics? Were you looking for higher performance? Were you looking for more flexibility? What was the, what, were, what was gonna be the selling point for that processor versus the 6800 family, for example. The, <coughs> the, the best architecture, uh, if customer use C compiler mm -hmm. there, the, the, uh, the H8 were designed in such, in such way that uh, the instruction set is symmetric and the registers uh, general registers, mm -hmm. no special specialty mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did uh, the, there was uh, the microprogramming, by the way, inside. Mm -hmm. And we did some uh, pipelining technique mm -hmm. to speed up. So, you know, the, our goal is to do to this way that the customer may concern about losing the performance. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the C compiler. C versus, compiler. Yeah. But as far as the hours is concerned, the, the, the no uh, degradation mm -hmm. of the performance. Mm -hmm. Even if you can, uh, even if you, you, do, you do use the C compiler. Mm -hmm. So that was the, our you know, goal. Mm -hmm. And uh, we said that to the customer. Mm -hmm. So it was it worked very well, mm -hmm. and in addition, we had a Zeta technology mm -hmm. integrated zero turnaround uh, time zero sorry right. zero turnaround time, 
which is uh, peer to programmable. Mm -hmm. And this is using EEPROM technology, is that uh, initially? Yeah, that's it. Uh, we started from the EEPROM, mm -hmm. and for those days, probably we moved to the Flash. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, we expanded this concept to the peripherals, and we made the peripheral function of the chip programmable. I see. And we named it uh, Zeta, the intelligent Zeta. Mm -hmm. So the first one is Zeta. Mm -hmm. uh, we, when we moved to the flash, F Zeta. <laughs> 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 and now then, the, what's the other one? Okay, let's make it intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> I Zeta. <laughs> so field programmability mm -hmm. was our differentiation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was six. What were the target markets for these products uh, at the time? The controller application. Mm -hmm. We didn't try to attack the data processing world, mm -hmm. where the software compatibility is very crucial. Intel. Right? Mm -hmm. Actually, we developed another version uh, using the same uh, the microprogramming CPU, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, made, made a uh, Zyro chip mm -hmm. upward compatible. Oh, okay. The chip itself is the same, but we deprogrammed. Right. And we tried to make it uh, the engine for the CPM plus. Mm -hmm. There was some trend there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Digital research. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we are. We did some collaboration with them, mm -hmm. and we made that uh, the chip, which is intended for the data processing application, mm -hmm. which gave the name to that processor, leading data processor LDP. LDP. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, we did some good uh, business with that. Mm -hmm. Actually, we licensed that to the Zyro. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, the, uh, in order to avoid any future, you know, controversial. So did uh, you have any legal problems with Motorola? Uh, we had. Uh, the contractual dispute mm -hmm. uh, for a while starting from the middle of the 80 or something. Mm -hmm. And eventually we go to the court, mm -hmm. the legal uh, dispute. And the end of the 80, it was something. Uh, how, uh, how was it resolved? Did, uh, uh, the, they sued us mm -hmm. by the patent in infringement. Mm -hmm. And we sued back sure. with uh, uh, their patent in infringement. Right. And uh, it took long, uh, like, uh, more than one year. Mm -hmm. But uh, the judge uh, finally said that you do <laughs> compromise. You figure it out. <laughs> huh? <laughs> so did you just cross license your. Uh... <laughs> Some monetary kind of things uh -huh. also. But uh, yeah. It was uh, the it's eighty nine or ninety mm -hmm. or something. And that's one of the reasons why we developed the other new architecture, which is uh, Super Edge, which is a disk machine. Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, we didn't want any. Uh, uh, dispute uh -huh. uh, with uh, the Motorola or wha whoever. Mm -hmm. and so we tried to make it totally new. Mm -hmm. And it was a good time, by the way. At that time, the new wave of the digital consumers, mm -hmm. digital consumer equipment uh, coming, mm -hmm. like uh, these are camera, or mm -hmm. car navigation systems, TV game machines, mm -hmm. all those. So it, it was good timing for us mm -hmm. to introduce the brand new processor. Mm -hmm. 
、それはノーイノーレガシーでやそうという。So, mm-hmm. We developed. So, when was that introduced? It's、uh, 90. 92. So we did start this development in the late 80s.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, the, the legal disputes h e l p s us,、mm-hmm. in one sense, to accelerate <laughs> the development of that, that right. project. Right. So during the mid 80s, there was a lot of Talk about RISC processors.、Mm-hmm. How did that influence the, any of the work that you did? Did you incorporate RISC technology in your new processors, or how did that? Well, anything happen there? there? Are,、um, yeah, like a MIPS、uh, by h e l l the arm and the rib MIPS and the、uh, Spark, and there were yeah, several. Yeah, Sparks. Yeah. And、uh, the. There are options to introduce that、uh, you know, architecture、mm-hmm. for us. But uh, uh, we didn't do that. Didn't per- you didn't pursue that you know, path? The you know, one that、uh, we didn't want to repeat the same、uh, issue in the, in the future.、Mm-hmm. And more importantly, the, we have a good.、Uh, Uh, technology available inside, and、uh, the, we thought that we can succeed in、uh, doing business, even though the ours is,、uh, you, I mean, the proprietary, as far as it's attractive enough. So we thought.、Uh, you we said in '92 that RISC microcomputers and microprocessors, digital consumer use, did you incorporate the technology then? Yes. Yes. That's、mm-hmm. what、uh, the, I'm, I'm talking about.、Okay. That's the one which called it new risk machine.、Mm-hmm. So, a risk machine tuned, uh, uh, targeted to the digital consumer electronics. Right, right. So, what we most uh, uh, we, we paid attention most is、mm-hmm. the code size efficiency.、Mm-hmm. Since it's going to gonna be embedded.、Mm-hmm. So, the memory size is the issue.、Mm-hmm. And uh, the <coughs> uh, we did uh, some good collaboration with our software researchers,、mm-hmm. I mean, the engineers,、mm-hmm. who are、uh, not our engineer, but uh, the, uh, the corporate Hitachi had the software、uh, research laboratories.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, we were closely allied with those people、mm-hmm. very, from the very beginning、uh, for the instruction definitions、mm-hmm. or register structures.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, the, they did good work、mm-hmm. to <coughs> develop the good C compiler、mm-hmm. uh, since we have been communicating from the beginning. Right. The, Top management of that laboratory, by the way,、uh, was very much uh, uh, cooperative. The, he beat us in person <laughs> for the specific uh, you know,、mm-hmm. uh, architectural designs、mm-hmm. and gave us the、uh, suggestion. And of course, he allocated good engineers.、Mm-hmm. Uh, and、uh, I believe that ours were also good.、Mm-hmm. Uh, we did good cooperation、mm-hmm. for that first chip. Yet, the, it was tough to persuade your customer <laughs> since <laughs> it's pro- I mean, the new、uh, architecture. So we combined uh, the uh, ZTAT、mm-hmm. uh, with that uh, CPU mm-hmm. and uh, the We launched that、uh, the, to the like,、uh, car navigation, so、uh, digital cameras、mm-hmm. and、uh, game machines. The, of course, the game machine uh, needed uh, uh, much more software,、mm-hmm. so we took out the you know,、uh, 
uh, see that I mean right. program memory. Right. Uh, and we made it SH2 or SH3 or SH4. And we did good work there. Mm -hmm. So mm, business was, it, the business itself picked up very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, there were good mindset there at that time, including the top management, the engineers and the researchers, mm -hmm. and sales organizations. All those were you know, tied closely mm -hmm. with each other and did the good effort. We, fought, we pinned down the customers mm -hmm. and we did best effort to do design means and to help them. And most of those were in consumer applications. Did you also penetrate the automotive market or was it mainly in like games and? Uh, at the time when we introduced that, mm -hmm. uh, it's mainly these are consumers. Mm -hmm. But uh, the afterward, I think that those days the automotive customer, I mean the engine control, we're using this kind of the risk core there. Mm -hmm. As you can imagine that the automotive customer is very conservative. Yes. And it takes time Take a long for them, time. like five years yeah. or something, to change these old you know, software. Right. So. And then a long time to get into production and ah, so yeah, forth. Yeah. Right. So at that uh, time when we introduced the this product, mm -hmm. it's mainly for those new emerging market. <laughs> <laughs> it was very successful. Was very we got number one position, by the way, the, in terms of the unit shipment, global number one in 95, mm. which is just a few years after the first introduction of the product. It's yeah. amazing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, very. Um, let's see, were you? So were you also involved in ASICs, in the ASIC business? Uh, the, I was not directly involved, but uh, uh, I did have ASICs under my mm -hmm. management. But yes, but uh, the, I say that I didn't do any specific. Yeah, you didn't, per yeah. but it, it, it was, was part of your organization. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, did you focus your ASIC work on certain applications or certain types of customers? Mm, the, uh, the, frankly speaking, the, our ASIC business was not necessarily very much successful. Mm -hmm. uh, I, we did some business with the customers, but uh, I cannot, I cannot uh, the say this is one which we right. succeed, we successfully right. did it. So um, it looks like uh, Hachachi formed almost like a separate company or whatever to go after the Super H market. You had Super H Incorporated. Was that uh, uh -huh. is that the case? Yes. It's uh, the uh, Super H Inc. Right. We, we, the company, I mean, Hitachi co uh, formed up the uh, new company mm -hmm. named Super H Inc. Yes. Which is joint venture with the ST Micro. And uh, the, we licensed uh, the Super H mm -hmm. to the ST Micro. And uh, we decided to jointly develop the uh, SH5, which is the uh, the highest, you know, but uh, performance among in the Super H series. Mm -hmm. And the mission of that company, Super H Inc., is to one to develop that, mm -hmm. and two to license these old technologies to the you know potential future potential customers, mm -hmm. including the other IDMs. But uh, it was 201 or something. It, uh, the, we couldn't uh, do the good uh, success in doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, the arm was already, you know, mm -hmm. widely used. Uh, and uh, the, if you remember that, that the 201 is the uh, 
the worst time to, yes. do, <laughs> <laughs> to do aggressive, you know, uh, the other uh, deeds mm -hmm. in general. Uh, so it's it's quite a bit uh, the, my regret that uh, the we couldn't do the good licensing of the super edge. Mm -hmm. uh, even though we did some you know good business mm -hmm. with that architecture, but we couldn't license those. Right. Uh, but uh, we were IDM, so it's not it's not easy. <laughs> to yes. license your uh, technology, which is core of your business differentiation right. to, to your others. competitor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and likewise, the you know, customer, I mean, the, the other IDM will do have some concern right. to license technology, yes. uh, which were owned by your competitor. Yes. So, the we did some you know licensing of course uh, including the st micro or some others but uh, it's not matter of the strategy i think mm -hmm. business strategy it's did matter of the business model itself mm -hmm. yeah did you expand your architecture to 16 or 32 bit or have you had it, did hitachi maintain the focus on 8 bit or how did that uh, the super edge it's not the 8 bit, 16 and 32 bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, the, we do further expanding the you know memory space by the SH5, which we are talking about. Okay. But, and uh, there are many stories there. Mm -hmm. it, it was something big, you know, R&D there. But uh, we couldn't, you know, succeed in, in doing business with that uh, Super H5. So, but has the Super H continued to be a important product for Hitachi? I mean, what? Oh yeah, the uh, the I I was relocated from the business unit of mm -hmm. the semi uh, chip uh, semiconductor in uh, around the two thousand or something mm -hmm. or late nineties. Uh, but the Super H itself has been you know, core, I mean, the differentiation of the semiconductor, Hitachi semiconductor, and... Uh, even today, I mean... It and uh, even today, I think that the Lunesas is doing, but the Lunesas, uh, Hitachi is no more the doing semiconductor business now. Okay, all of it has been transferred all to... All transferred, Renes Renes uh, spun off, and mm -hmm. uh, merged to the, you know, the people there, uh, right. to the NEC and uh, Mitsubishi. Mm -hmm. So I don't need, I don't know the latest status, but mm -hmm. as far as I know that uh, the Super H has been the core of the uh, Lunesas business. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the de facto standard for the, for example, uh, car navigation systems. Mm -hmm. uh, they did many, you know, uh, system error size using that uh, architecture and also they did some for the cellular phones, but nowadays uh, the smartphone is the area which decides everything, mm -hmm. and uh, the arm there. Right. So I don't know how much the, they are doing there. I, I I am sure that they have licensed arm already, mm -hmm. the, like a Lunesas. Mm. Um, but. Uh, uh, Zeta technology is still there mm -hmm. uh, as technology. So, but I remember it that uh, when I was doing that kind of the you know, chip business or chip development, uh, we, we did have the uh, off-site meeting quite often mm -hmm. among the, our engineers and uh, the research group. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were saying that Let's try to make the new product uh, which can survive at least and which can increase its value for mm -hmm. more than 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, the, 
I remember that I talked about the wine. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's make a good wine. It can <laughs> last uh, for a long time. Yeah, last and uh, <laughs> even increase its value yes. as it gets old. <laughs> right. right. Ten years at least. Yeah. And uh, the Zeta is it's eighty something, right? So it's almost thirty years old. <laughs> it's more than 10 years. <laughs> right. <laughs> and very the, fine wine. Very fine wine, yeah. <laughs> and the uh, Super H is, I mean, the, this kind of the new uh, category of the risk machine mm -hmm. is still, you know, valid mm -hmm. concept there. So mm -hmm. both of them. I'm very happy with those. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm very happy that I could uh, do that kind of the job. I, I could be involved in that kind of the development. So when does when was the when was Renaissance formed? When did all this get spun off to? Two, two, oh, oh, two I think. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I was relocated from the semiconductor group to the other business group. It was uh, ninety something, ninety eight mm -hmm. or something to telecom division of Hitachi. So mm -hmm. I did some work there. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you, it says here you were, 2001, you were And present. came back to this. Oh, you came period. back, I see. <laughs> and, I see. Uh, signed uh, the, that uh, company. I see, okay. That, that kind of so you spent some time in uh, telecommunications as well. Uh, yeah. The opto uh, devices and uh, Hitachi did span out that uh, business unit, mm. and I did some work to do that. Mm -hmm. and it was, again, that was very much, you know, interesting and uh, uh, precious experience for me mm -hmm. to span out the, you know, business unit. Mm -hmm. mm. But yes, so it, it, it was very much interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you came back, did, so did you retire in 2008 or? 2010, actually. 10. Yeah, I moved to the other Hitachi subsidiary, which is Hitachi uh, ULSI Systems. Mm -hmm. ULSI meaning that, uh, not VLSI, mm -hmm. ULSI. Ultra, ultra, ultra large scale. Yeah. <laughs> ultra LSI Systems Inc. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, but that was after the spin out uh, to Renaissance, right? So there was still yeah, some, you know, the, the it was fabulous group mm -hmm. uh, companies. Uh, the they did the engineering work mm -hmm. for system design and uh, um, the semiconductor designs, mm -hmm. and also they did uh, the product design as well mm -hmm. as a fabulous company. So the, we did some fabulous chips, uh, chip business as a fabulous company there. And uh, also some like SSD, I mean niche market, mm -hmm. very highly reliable SSDs mm -hmm. or like uh, uh, the software package like a voice synthesis or mm -hmm. voice recognitions, other kind of the package software. So SSD is uh, solid state solid, drive. Uh, yeah, flash. Flash uh, drive. Flash storage. Right. With special. Oh, with uh, special features. architecture yeah, and yeah. software to make it. So mm. that, that was that company was uh, the still there. Uh, since you know, you actually need that kind of the technology in the, in the oh, company. I see. So. I see. Okay. So, what uh, d is there anything particular you want to call attention to in terms of either the telecommunications or the work that you did there? Is there any specific products or things that you think were um, worth commenting on? Well, I am. Doing the, some consultation work to the one U.S. based the technology venture company, mm -hmm. 
they are specialized in the non volatile memory. Mm -hmm. So uh, I am interested in that uh, you know technology area. Mm -hmm. uh, non volatile mm -hmm. and uh, the random access mm -hmm. and high speed read and write, which means that uh, the you know, ultimate memory, mm -hmm. <laughs> non volatile, random access, mm -hmm. high speed, read light. Mm -hmm. And uh, the. Flash is normally it's high speed very read, slow. but, but read slow. Read speed, but uh, you know, slow high write. slow. Yeah. The, this is one of the hot topic in the industry, I mean, the semiconductor industry and also storage industry, mm -hmm. industries or computer architectures. So I think that the, this kind of the memory, new memory, will have the good impact mm -hmm. uh, very soon in uh, storage architecture and uh, uh, the computer architectures. So it's does that point. require new process technology or uh, is that... It requires new process technologies, yes. Okay. Uh, I'm paying attention to that. <laughs> that, that so new <laughs> architecture, new process technology, new software uh, uh, all together to make yeah. a new... It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Very yes. interesting. So is there anything that we've missed? Are there other things you'd like to call attention to or that you wanted to, um, maybe that I didn't ask about? I think that uh, the, I talked <laughs> too much. <you> know? <laughs> I think that uh, we covered. Uh, no. So you've spoken about th this new area that you're interested in. Is there, uh, if you were a uh, new student leaving uh, university today, is what, <laughs> you know, what, uh, if, what if technologies I, do you find? <laughs> if I were a new student, yeah. I mean, the student at What college, direction would you go? <laughs> um, the, I would choose uh, the car career to make the, to make or to create something which can survive more than 100 years. <laughs> <laughs> or hundreds of years. Yes. Like, uh, you mean know. memory technology or something? Or data? No, no, no. I, I think that, like, uh, like, like uh, architect or <laughs> oh. <laughs> like something, you know, which can last long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> Not just the semiconductor kind of things. <laughs> uh, like, uh, yeah. There are many, you know, kind of the, you know, work done there outside. Yeah. I mean, in the, in the world. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, thank you okay. very much for taking the time to share your story, and uh, we could learn. We had the opportunity to learn about some important developments uh, during that time. So, thank you very much. Thank you. I okay. do. I did enjoy the, the talk. I mean, the talking with you. Thank you. <laughs>